When faced with hours of exercise, you need to be hydrated to maintain your performance. But how much should you drink? Do you need electrolytes? And is there a risk of drinking too much water? I'm Coach Phil Mosley, and in this video, I'll show you exactly what to drink in long distance triathlons, such as an Ironman 140.6. From sweat rates to prehydration, I'll reveal everything you need to know so that you can perform at your best in training and on triathlon race day. There's no one size fits all solution. So later in the video, I'll explain how your sweat rate and sweat type should affect your hydration strategy. I'm sure you've heard people say things like, drink to thirst or replace what you sweat out. But these traditional sayings are very much open to interpretation. They can leave some athletes to drink too little and become dehydrated, or perhaps more dangerously, drink too much and suffer from something called hyponatremia. Drinking to thirst can be a good idea on cool days, but racing for multiple hours in hot or humid conditions will require much more consideration, especially for heavier sweaters. Otherwise, your sweat loss can lead to decreased blood volume, which can present as an increased heart rate, altered perception of effort and fatigue, potential GI issues, and feelings of nausea. We want to avoid these race ruining problems at your next long distance triathlon. So let's get a bit more specific on how much fluid you should consume. Dehydration is inevitable in events lasting multiple hours. It's simply impossible and not recommended to replace 100% of the fluid you sweat out. One way to help reduce the risk of dehydration during a lengthy endurance event is to start hydrated. And a simple plan is to drink an extra 500 milliliters or 16 ounces of water in the evening and add electrolytes to this drink. This will improve your hydration status and the electrolytes will help your body retain fluid, which can be vital for the following day. Then aim to do the same again on the morning of the event. Consume 500 milliliters or 16 ounces of water with electrolytes between breakfast and the start of the race and I'll explain more about electrolytes later in this video. For some athletes who don't sweat much, drinking to thirst can be sufficient. However, the sweatier people watching this video will likely need a more specific plan. As a starting point, begin with 500 milliliters or 16 ounces of water per hour and adjust upwards or downwards based on how you feel. On hotter days, you may benefit from adding electrolytes, especially if your kit tends to contain a lot of salt marks after a workout. If you want to get more specific, understanding how much sweat you lose per hour is a great idea. You can do this by weighing yourself before and after a workout and measuring the difference. However, bear in mind that the amount you sweat will vary based on the conditions. For example, hotter days will cause higher sweat rates and the cooling effect of riding outside will cause you to sweat less versus riding on an indoor trainer. Once you know how much you sweat, you can make more educated guesses about how much fluid you should aim to replace during the bike and run. And before I move on to the next point, which is about electrolytes, I wanted to say that I have a wide range of inexpensive long distance triathlon training programs, which all come with rapid coach support for whenever you have any questions. And to learn more, click the link on the screen or in the description below. When you sweat, you'll lose many electrolytes and electrolytes are essential minerals like sodium, calcium, and potassium, but we're most interested in sodium, which helps you maintain fluid balance, cognitive function, nerve impulse transmission, and muscle contraction. Sodium is found in table salt, by the way. We all lose different amounts of sodium within our sweat, which has nothing to do with how much you sweat. Someone who is very sweaty could hardly lose any sodium, and someone who barely sweats at all could lose a lot of sodium. As your sweat losses increase, your blood volume gradually reduces, and your body must work harder to pump blood to your skin to help you cool down. You may notice signs like a higher heart rate and feelings of fatigue, and some athletes can also experience muscle cramps. This is potentially why many athletes can survive with just water during short distance triathlons, but struggle when they start racing for more hours. Drinking water can help, but once your sodium losses add up, you'll need to replace the electrolytes that you're losing. So it's well worth adding some electrolytes to your water during a long distance triathlon or carrying salt stick capsules, which you can take with water to keep your electrolyte levels up. A successful hydration plan is rooted in understanding your body's signals and sweat characteristics. The best way to start is to create a baseline strategy focused on your sweat rate and sodium loss and then refine this through practice in training and racing. Here are a few examples. An athlete with a high sweat rate and salty sweat should consume one liter or 34 ounces of water per hour containing 1000 milligrams of sodium. 
If you're an athlete with a high sweat rate and unsalty sweat, you should consume one liter or 34 ounces of water per hour containing 500 milligrams of sodium, so half as much sodium. For an athlete with a low sweat rate and salty sweat, you should try 500 milliliters or 17 ounces of water per hour containing 500 milligrams of sodium. Whereas an athlete with a low sweat rate and unsalty sweat might consume 500 milliliters or 17 ounces of water containing just 250 milligrams of sodium. So different sodium needs for everyone. When it comes to hydration, flexibility is key. So be ready to adjust on the fly, responding to thirst, how you feel and the weather conditions to make sure you stay hydrated and mentally sharp. We've covered more on the risks of dehydration in this video, but hyponatremia or overhydration is equally as dangerous for long distance athletes. This is a condition caused by low sodium levels in the blood. It often results from overhydrating with plain water and then diluting your blood sodium concentrations, which are critical for muscle function and nerve communication. Symptoms range from nausea and confusion to severe complications like seizures. It's good to remain hydrated. You should consider including sodium in your fluids, especially during long distance events like Ironman. Luckily, most sports brands do include electrolytes such as sodium. So check on the back of the packet and ensure yours contains some and integrate this into your hydration plan. There are five main things to remember when building your hydration plan for your next event. One, begin every race well hydrated because it's impossible to catch up once you start sweating. Two, use training sessions to estimate your sweat rate and sodium loss and then adjust your intake accordingly. Three, use sodium to support your fluid absorption and retention. Four, be guided by your thirst and learn to interpret what your body is telling you. And five, have a hydration plan, but be willing to adapt it based on the conditions and how you feel. Knowing what to drink during long distance triathlons is a constant balance between science, personal experience and intuition. Sadly, there's no one size fits all solution, but this video will help you begin to experiment and adapt your hydration plan. And if you want to learn more about nutrition, check out our Nutrition for Endurance Sports playlist, or we have a great video about training for the bike section of a long distance triathlon, and those will both be on the screen for you now.